In this video, we will talk about how to calculate holding period returns. And then after we get the holding period returns, we, we will do the arithmetic return, we will then annualize the arithmetic return, do the geometric return, and then annualize the geometric return. I have five, uh, four months of data here, which means I can do three months of returns because I need the ending, beginning price and the ending price. So I can do September because uh, September is ending and beginning price, the beginning price for September is the August 31st, the previous month's closing price. I have October's closing, and then September 30th is beginning price for October, and then November's closing price, the beginning price for November is October 31st. I also have a dividend. It was announced in August. It went X in September, and it will be paid in um, October. We know that the only date we care about is the X date, so this 25 cent dividend will be putting in September. And so first let's do the holding period returns. And so we can do that by, we'll do September, we'll do October, and we'll do November. September's return is and for all of them, the holding period return, as you remember from the class, very easy formula. You just take the ending market value minus the beginning market value plus accrued income. In this case, it will be that X dividend, that dividend we receive on X day, divided by the beginning market value. So for September, that is... Oops, whoops, I'm hitting all the wrong buttons there. For September, that is 143.98 minus 150.67 plus our dividend of 25 cents. That divided by our beginning value, 150.61. And if you do all of that, I'm going to be using, I'll be rounding these. So when we do the averages, everything will be rounded. You'll see the return was minus 0 0.0424, and I recommend you do all these percents as decimals, not as not using the percent sign. For October, the return is the ending value for October is 156.05, beginning value is 143.98. There is no income this time, so you divide that by 143.98, and when you do that, you see a very strong return at 0 0.0. 838 and then for November November's holding period return is 158.54 the ending value for November minus 156.05 plus no income divided by 156.05 and that equals 0 0.016 so there's my holding period return so that answers question A the arithmetic average, you just take minus 0 0.0424 plus 0 0.0838 plus 0 0.061. Again, I'm using rounded numbers. If you do this in Excel, you may get a slightly different answer because Excel won't round unless you tell it to. So that divided because there's three months, divide by three, you get an average of 0 0.0191. So that is the arithmetic average. And then we want to annualize that. And so, because we're doing monthly, we just take the monthly average times 12. If we were doing weekly, he would take the weekly average times 52. But we're doing monthly, so the monthly times 12 is 0.2292, or 22.92%. The geometric average is a little bit more difficult because here we have to link them together and so what we do here what's the parentheses here we do 1 plus the first month which is 1 minus 0 0.0424 that times 1 plus the second month 0 0.0838 that times 1 plus the last month 0 0.0016 
we take all of that and the, and raise it. Now make sure you do all of that. See how the parentheses go all the way around it. Raise that to the one because there's three months to the one third minus one. And when we do that, you know that you're going to get on on the air, on the geometric average. You know you can get a number slightly lower than the arithmetic average, and in this case we do. It's 0 0.0178. So there's your geometric average. We can then annualize it. This number can be higher than the arithmetic average because of the compounding effect. But here we simply do the exact same thing. In fact, you may want to calculate this number here and set it aside because when you do the annualize, you're going to do the exact same equation. All of that would be exactly the same, except instead of raising it to the one third, you'll raise it to the 12 third because this is monthly and there's 12 months in a year. So the 12th there, if we were doing weekly, you would have raised it to the 52 divided by 3. And when you do that, you'll get the number 0 0.2363. Notice this is larger than the annualized arithmetic average. Um, but that's fine because of the compounding effect. So you know the geometric average will be lower than the arithmetic average. In this case, it was. Your arithmetic was 191, your geometric was 178. When you annualize it, though, you can get a geometric that is higher. The only last thing you've got to do is you might on your exam, um, on your exam just put a little asterisk next to the annualized arithmetic, an asterisk ne next to the air, uh, annualized uh, geometric, and just the asterisk says the CF, CFA, and it won't let me do an asterisk there. Let's see if I can do that again. The CFA Institute does not allow returns for less than a year to be annualized. And that's the entire question. Thanks.